There is only one way to learn physics. Go to school, learn all the math and science you can there, and then go off to university to study physics proper. That's a tough path though, and it requires a lot of effort and resources, which can be a barrier excluding some people that would have been interested. Because physics has a lot of interesting topics, you know, black holes, quantum entanglement, dark matter, elementary particles. All of this stuff has a great appeal because it is the most fundamental level of how the universe works. Disclaimer. You will never really learn physics by reading or watching popular science because that's simply not what popular science is there for. Sure, it is educational in nature and uh, you can absolutely learn some really good stuff. But basically it only gives you a narrative version of the results while hiding all of the process behind the results. And this process is what physics really is. All the math, all the instruments, all the measurements, all the details. Like, you won't learn how to bake bread by looking at some really nice bread. You need to look at the process of how it is made. But can't you just learn all the physics on your own without having to go like five plus years to university? Can you study physics without studying physics? It is crazy how much you could do. This point goes back to the promise of the early internet. Having all of the information collected by humanity accessible to all of humanity. This was supposed to trigger an explosion of knowledge and education greater than Gutenberg's printing press. Did not quite turn out that way. Sure, it was inexcusably naive to think that in the first place, but the potential, the potential is still there. There is an incredible amount of freely accessible scripts and lecture notes, textbooks, exercise sheets, and even full videos and online courses. I find it remarkable that you can watch full videos on topics like quantum mechanics of the original MIT lectures here on YouTube. The amount and quality of information publicly available truly is crazy. Technically, everything you need to study physics is there on the internet for free. But it's scattered all over the place and um, it is often difficult to judge how legit stuff is on the internet. So all the bits are there, it's just that the overarching structure is missing. This is Gerard Het Hoft, a Dutch physicist and um, not just any physicist, but the winner of the 1999 Nobel Prize in Physics. So yeah, bro knows what he's talking about. He has actually collected an entire program of online resources that cover all the topics that should be covered in physics. Link in the description. And while you invariably get some of those, Most links are still good and give you a treasure trove of scripts and papers. He even gives you a little pep talk on his page, which I find really endearing. So the material is all there, but it's just the material. And material isn't all you need. Learning physics, or learning anything really, is also always a, a social undertaking. It always involves other people. You need other people in two functions, as fellow students and as teachers. You need other people to support you, to explain something to you when you're stuck. And um, maybe even more importantly, you need them as an audience to explain something too, in order to really grasp it. Secondly, you need other people with more knowledge than you, who can examine your understanding and your thinking, and can correct you, 
It's very easy to take a wrong turn and then waste a lot of time and make no progress at all. And you need someone to stop you and turn you around in such a case. The most important role that other people have though is uh, to, to motivate you to keep going, to pull you along. I would even say that if you try to study something as complicated and, and, and comprehensive as physics, you have zero chance to finish it unless you have some other people studying it with you or even just alongside you. Also, there is one phenomenon here that should act as a cautionary tale. The group of people called cranks or crackpots. This topic actually deserves its own video because it it has become so multifaceted and unfortunately pervasive. Until I get around to making this video, you can check out a video by another YouTuber called Angela Collier. I hope. Collier? Collier? It is a bit long and rambly, but it's also an excellent description of the crackpot problem. Anyway, classically a crackpot is a person with uh, very little knowledge of physics, but the conviction that they have found some significant new theory or um, a significant error in an existing theory. Um, yeah, like people barely able to do high school math uh, disproving Einstein's relativity. Just ask anyone working at a university. They get tons of emails or regular mail of that kind. It is sometimes even used to teach graduate students by letting them figure out the mistakes made. However, especially these days, it's just conspiracy theories with the thinnest layer of physics on top. The problem with crackpots isn't that they're necessarily stupid, because most aren't, but that they went off in a wild direction and had nobody to stop them and check them. Because stopping people when they go astray is just as important as motivating them to go on. So that's one of the biggest dangers of doing things completely on your own. So, could you study physics without studying physics? You could find all the material online. You could find people to help you and check you. But even if you pulled that off, the main issue will always be the formal degree. The idea behind grades and exams and degrees is that only those shall be accepted who have shown the required qualifications. There is nowadays a lot of bad-mouthing these checks as gatekeeping, which is meant in a derogatory manner, but the point is, there absolutely is a gate to keep here. There are lots of people who should not be allowed to call themselves and work as physicists. And yeah, the system isn't perfect, it's maybe not even good, but it's way better than a free-for-all. So. Could you learn physics on your own and then convince somebody to give you a degree for that? Realistically, nah. Technically, there might be some possibility of taking a great number of exams to prove your abilities, but this quickly becomes identical to just studying online anyway. And nobody at a normal brick and mortar university will ever waste their time on you. Let's be real. So in the end, due to the necessity of grading, it will always boil down to having to attend some form of university or online university and just learn on your own. The only other use case I could think of is somebody who already is a professional, for example, someone with a degree in chemistry or engineering, self-learning physics as an additional qualification. And sure, there are some anecdotes like uh, the French painter who was admitted to London Imperial College as a self-taught physicist. Or Freeman Dyson who was accepted into the highest circles of physics without ever doing a PhD. But there's a reason why stories like these are even known at all. Because there's a few of them. <laughs>